I have put together um, a variety of my thoughts on um, Bitcoin and uh, financial management and and risk management and and how, uh, what the future holds for us. And I'm excited, excited to share them with you today. So without further ado, uh, Bitcoin, the smart asset class. Um, I'll start with an observation. Uh, there is an endless economic war. And it's measured in the distribution of capital. And here on this slide, you see about $900 trillion of capital. And for those of you who know, uh, know a little bit about me, you know, my view is uh, money is economic energy and capital is just another word for economic energy. And this represents nearly, you know, $900 trillion of economic energy around the world. And over time, governments are always vying to, uh, to take it from other governments. They're vying to take it from corporations. And so there's a never ending competition between governments, countries, corporations, institutions, families, and individuals over money and over economics. And what you see is $900 trillion divided by, by various asset classes. And Bitcoin, as of the summer, was about a $500 billion asset class. I'm drawing upon uh, the graphics of Croesus, a, a great Bitcoin uh, analyst, and you can find him on uh, Twitter at that handle. Now, the most important thing to understand is that companies are attempting to increase their wealth by creating products and services. Governments are increasing their wealth either by fighting wars, passing laws, or by printing currency. So we could start with an observation in, in this entire last hundred years. The world reserve currency, the US dollar, is collapsing versus assets such as the S&P index. The S&P is 500 of the most valuable companies in the United States or maybe the world. It's collapsing against real estate, against gold, against art. And it's hard to see this over the course of a year or two or three years. But if you look over the course of a century, I find it to be very clarifying. And on average, what you find is the United States dollar is losing 7% of its value each year for the last 100 years. Now, um, if you look at government statistics in the United States, they will tell you that the inflation rate is about 2%, and they'll show you a graph like this, which shows that the dollar has gone from, has lost you know, something like 94% or 95% of its purchasing power over this 100 years. But that's based upon the consumer inflation rate. Consumer inflation is the lowest inflation rate. It's a market basket of goods that are easy to manufacture with a machine or they're easy to print, or they're very, um, they're not labor intensive, they're information intensive, like watching YouTube videos or boxed starch or things manufactured. This is the lowest inflation rate. In fact, the, the, uh, the producer price index is a higher inflation rate and the asset inflation rate is higher. So it's a mistake to think that $26 in 1910 is, or 1920 is worth a $1 in 2020. In fact, if you look at the US dollar versus um, other assets, you can see it's losing value at a much more rapid rate. So the consumer goods rate is 93%, minus 93%, that, that's this chart. The US dollar versus gold has lost 99% of its value. We went from $20 an ounce to $2,000 an ounce, and so 99%. And the US dollar against the S&P index, which is the US dollar against a corporation, a, a successful competitive company, uh, or the US dollar against Miami Beach real estate has lost 99.8% of its value over those 100 years. Now that's, not really well understood. Most people don't think the inflation rate is 7%. They think it's 2%. And the difference between 2 and 7 is 93 versus 99.8 or 99. even 9. Now, let's focus in on why the dollar loses value against real estate so rapidly. I'll show you a picture of Miami Beach. 
you see, what you notice is there's a fixed amount of beach and all those buildings on the beach are there because the value of an acre of land on that beach is 20, 30, 40 million dollars. Very expensive. In fact, the, the value of an acre in Miami Beach uh, about 90 years ago or 100 years ago was $10,000 an acre. And a few years ago, it was $10 million an acre. Today is $20 million. 1000 to 2000 Now, why is it that the price goes up so fast? It goes up much faster than the cost of a Big Mac or the cost of uh, cereal or the cost of a YouTube video. Hey, money talkers, your crypto roller coaster just kind of loopy loop. I'm your guide on this Bitcoin joyride. And today we're revving up on the latest crypto headlines that got everyone buzzing. Buckle up, because it's going to be a wild ride. Bitcoin, the heavyweight champ of crypto, just punched through the $39,000 barrier. Kaboom, it's dancing on the rooftops of prices not seen since April 2022. What's fueling this rocket ride? Well, whispers of ETF approvals and global market vibes are setting the stage. Bitcoin world spilled the beans about the most massive crypto fund inflows in two years. With $40,000 in sight, is Bitcoin just getting warmed up? Are we talking $50,000 or even hitting all-time highs by the end of the month? Hold on tight, the crypto show is just beginning. Bitcoin outflows are singing a bullish anthem and everyone's ears are perking up. The surge in outflows is like a crypto symphony, playing a sweet melody for the believers. Rising transaction fees? That's the drum roll, showcasing network demand hitting the high notes. What's sparking this musical brilliance? It could be the growing interest in BTC ordinals, opening the Bitcoin stage to NFT enthusiasts. Miners are rocking too, riding a wave of increased revenues. With BTC at $38,777.65 in trading volume cranked up, are we witnessing the rise of a crypto rock opera? Money talkers, that's the wrap for today's crypto roller coaster. Bitcoin's soaring, outflows are making sweet music, and the stage is set for a blockbuster. What's your take on these crypto theatrics? Let's continue our discussion with Michael Saylor. And the reason why is because only God can make more beachfront. Uh, politicians can't print more beach. You can't manufacture more beach with a factory. And AI can't create more beach on a silicon chip. There is no way to trick the world into there being more beachfront property. You can see it's a certain amount. It was that amount in 1930. It's that amount 100 years later. And so as the money supply expands, that price goes up proportionally. So that's a fair yardstick. And, and what you would say is the beachfront property is scarce, desirable property. Now, that's the strongest currency in the world, the United States dollar. The US never fought a war on its own land. It never lost a war. It's been the dominant uh, global power for 100 years. Everywhere else, it's worse. Every other country it was worse. In fact, just about every other currency went to zero in that time period. And what you find is international currencies are generally collapsing at a faster rate, oftentimes 14% or even more per year. So that means that in the last 20 years, the rupee is down 47% against the dollar, right? The real is down 62%. The, the Pakistani currency down 81%. The Turkish Lira down 96% and the peso, unfortunately, is down 99.8% against the dollar at the same time that the dollar is collapsing against the S&P and against real estate. In fact, the US dollar lost, you know, something uh, like 75% of its value against scarce desirable assets at the same time that these currencies lost their value. So really, if you were valuing the peso against scarce desirable assets, you've lost 99.95% of your wealth in 22 years. This is not a good chart, but it's important to know the facts in order to decide the solution. Most investors think that they're smart, and most people think that investing is the solution. But it turns out that investment gains are generally just driven by the inflation rate. So if you look at this chart, the green line is the money supply in the US dollars. And the red line is the S&P index, the stock index. And as you can see, 
you could, if you didn't know about the money supply, or if you thought the inflation rate was only 2%, you would think that your stocks are outperforming inflation and your companies are brilliant and they're succeeding and your investment strategy is brilliant and you're making lots of money. But what you can see here is that a portfolio of companies is really just tracking the money supply. The companies are doing things. They may be growing 2% a year, but the same 2% a year of improvement in productivity is being offset by 2% chaos and destruction and risk and liability that people don't pay attention to. And so when you net it all out, um, a portfolio of companies is really just tracking the inflation rate and the money supply. Rich Dad Poor Dad author Robert Kiyosaki has issued more warnings about the U.S. economy, including a giant market collapse, a possible next Great Depression, and another war. The famous author emphasized that millions of people will face really hard times ahead. He urged them to be prepared, reiterating his recommendation of gold, silver, and Bitcoin. To Morgan Chase CEO, Jamie Dimon has warned that something bad may happen in the U.S. economy. I'm not trying to scare people. I'm more in the category that something could go wrong, he stressed. A lot of things out there are dangerous and inflationary. Be prepared. Interest rates may go up and that might lead to recession. Edelman Financial Services founder Rick Edelman has explained that financial advisors are waiting for the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, to approve spot Bitcoin exchange-traded funds, ETFs, so that they can offer these investment products to their clients. Every compliance department will say okay to that product because it's just an ETF like other thematic ETFs, he emphasized. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing.